A lot has happened in the last 10 years, and I don't just mean my receding hairline or declining fitness either, but when it comes to road bikes, I see two examples show really well. So on my left, we have a Cannondale Super 6 Evo launched in 2011, and on my right, a brand new 2021 model year Giant TCR Advanced Pro Disc. Two stunning bikes, but what are the differences? What has changed in 10 years of road bike tech and development? And which is better or worse? And how do you compare when you ride both bikes back to back? Well, I'm gonna do precisely that in this video to make sure you keep watching to find out how these two bikes compare. Retro versus modern, antique versus state of the art. Well, let's find out. This should be a fun video, so let's dive in. The 2011 truly was a simpler time. Disc brakes weren't really talked about at all then and aerodynamics were only really seen on time trial bikes and a few aero road bikes. But mostly we had rim brakes, dual pivot rim brakes like these were the king back then and there's no real aerodynamic influence on this bike other than simple round tubes being as skinny as possible. But certainly no truncated profiles or anything we're seeing on modern bikes and simple external cable routing. The Super 6 Evo launched in 2011 and it was a big evolution from the previous Super 6 itself launched in 2006. The frame was two years in development with a big focus on making it as light as possible and light it certainly was. Claim weight for a 56 centimeter frame using the ballistic and high modulus carbon fiber which this frame has was just 695 grams. A year later, they made it even lighter with a 655 gram frame. So 10 years ago, weight was a big focus for frame designers with a lot of bike brands really pushing the boundaries of what was possible with carbon fiber. And we were seeing sub 700 gram, sub 600 gram frames on a regular basis. And the Super 6 Evo was definitely in that category of super lightweight bikes. Um, so weight was a clear focus back then, more so than aerodynamics and internal cable routing which as you can see, this bike has external cable routing for the gears, only the rear brake goes inside the top tube. And another area where this bike looks dated compared to a more modern bike, like a Giant behind it, is in the use of mostly simple round tubes and a very horizontal top tube and a seat stays joining at the top tube, seat tube cluster. So a very traditional looking bike. So lightweight, definitely one of the lightest frames you can still buy actually. Rim brakes, external cable routing, and a massive 5339 chain set. That really dates the bike as well. And then we fast forward 10 years to the brand new giant TCR Advanced Pro 1 disc, which I have here. And you've probably already seen my first look if you subscribe to my channel for a while. And if you missed that, you can see it linked in the card above. The big talking point with this bike compared to the Evo and where we've really seen road bikes evolve in the last 10 years is the move to disc brakes from rim brakes, although you can still buy the TCR with rim brakes, but we're seeing lots of manufacturers go fully to disc brakes with no rim brake offering. So instead of mechanically operated rim brakes, we now have hydraulic disc brakes with disc rotors attached to the hubs and small calipers attached to the frame and the fork. And in place of the quick release axles of the previous bike, we now have 12 millimeter through axles that bolt into the frame with special dropouts. You can still buy a TCR with rim brakes if you prefer, but some manufacturers or more manufacturers are now fully embracing disc brakes and not even providing a rim brake option. So we're really seeing disc brakes become the dominant choice. There's still a lot of debate around the benefits or pros and cons of disc brakes versus rim brakes, but it's clear that customer demand is moving towards disc brakes, which is why manufacturers are now making lots more disc brake bikes because they make bikes they know they can sell. and if people weren't buying disc brakes, they wouldn't make them. So disc brakes are here to stay. So disc brakes are a big move forward in the last 10 years. It's taken a while to get to this stage. We've had a few bumps in the road with the adoption of disc brakes and the technology has taken a while to really mature. But now disc brakes are in a really good place, really simple, uh, low maintenance and easy to look after. And the weight penalty is not as much as it used to be, but it is still there to be fair. So rim brakes uh, are still lighter at the moment. 
And then moving to the frame, there are a couple of big developments that have happened in the last 10 years. The one is a move to fully internal cable routing, as you can see in this bike. Uh, some bikes do it more or less. The Giant has all the cables and hoses inside the frame and fork and then come out the down tube. We're seeing a move to electronic and wire group as well, which really minimizes the amount of cables exposed on the frame. And some bikes have really quite impressive internal cable routing solutions, like that new Trek and Monda SLR you might have seen on my channel a few days ago. So full internal cable routing. Some bikes now have specially designed handlebars and stems to make sure the cables are all inside of the bike and no exposed cables at all. And then we have an aero profiled frame. So this bike has been given a big makeover with a new aero down tube, aero fork blades, head tube, seat tube, seat post as well. It's aero where it's round on the Super 6 Evo. So a big push towards aerodynamics. And that has really been the big focus for the last few years. When the Super 6 Evo launched, you'd only find aero on time trial bikes really, but now you see aero on normal, once lightweight focused bikes like TCR. So weight is not the big focus it once was when the Super 6 Evo launched. I think designers realized they got to a weight which is low enough. There are fewer benefits from going lighter and lighter. So they instead moved their development towards aerodynamics and finding other ways to make bikes faster and to make the experience of cycling and racing even better than before. Another big design trend is the compact rear triangle with dropped rear stays. Something the TUCR did back in the 90s, but most manufacturers are now embracing. Even the new Super 6 Evo has very dropped rear stays in the pursuit of more aero and more comfort. Talking of comfort, another big change from the original Super 6 Evo is much bigger tire clearance. That Evo would take a maximum of a 25 millimeter wide tire, which was considered wide back then when most people were running 23 millimeter wide tires. But this new TCR, as many road bikes in this category, will take up to a 32 millimeter wide tire. So it really gives you scope to run bigger tires, faster tires for more comfort, whether you're racing or just doing long sporties and you want more comfort and more smoothness. On the scales, there's quite a difference between the two bikes, as you might expect. The Super 6 Evo here weighs 6.7 kilograms, while the Giant TCR here weighs 7.5 kilograms. But, and quite a big but, it's not quite an apples to apples comparison. Let me explain why. This high mod frame was a top of the range frame you could buy back in 2011, 2012 when I got it. And the frame set alone cost 2,300 pounds and it was the best of the best. I got SRAM 10 speed mechanical gearing on it, quite lightweight 50 mil deep section carbon wheels and some quite nice carbon equipment on it. So quite an expensive build. When it launched, the most expensive bike you could buy off the shelf was about eight and a half thousand pounds. By comparison, this is a mid-range giant TCR costing 3,500 pounds with an 860 gram frame. So quite a bit heavier than a sub 700 gram frame of this bike. But a better comparison would be the TCR Advance Pro SL, which is a top range model with a 765 gram frame. So that would be a much better comparison with this Super 6 Evo, uh, much closer to the weight of this bike. It really narrows the gap between a 10 year newer bike with disc brakes and other aero advances compared to what we had 10 years ago. And the reason for using these two bikes, if you're wondering, is simply because this is my own personal Super 6 Evo, which I've ridden tens and tens of thousands of kilometers on it, been my daily bike for the last 10 years or so. And this is the only 2021 bike I've managed to get my hands on yet due to the pandemic causing quite a, a slowdown in supply of bikes because they've just been selling like hotcakes. So that's why I'm doing a comparison with the two bikes. It might make more sense to have two bikes from the same brand, uh, same spec level to do a more fairer uh, comparison, but don't take it too seriously. It's just a bit of fun, just see how to compare. And I'm really focusing on the performance and kind of the tech changes that have happened over the last 10 years. So I just wanna make sure that's clear in case you have any questions about that. But now it's time to find out how the bikes compare. So I'll get changed and we'll go for a ride. And I think we'll take the Super 6 Evo for a spin first. This Evo has aged really, really well. It's just a stiff, responsive, agile, direct, fast and fun as I remember it way back in 2012 when I first built it up. 
There's a myth I want to get out of the way straight away that you often see on forums regarding carbon fiber going soft with age. Well, riding this Evo, that is clearly not the case at all. Probably not quite as stiff as the latest bikes, but where are we noticing a difference riding this bike back to back with the giant TCR and a few other more modern bikes I've ridden in the last 18 months or so, is the comfort. Now, I always remember the Evo being a really smooth riding bike for the time, but that's an area where road bikes have really developed, especially race bikes. And the latest bikes are, simply put, much smoother and much better at dealing with rough roads, whether cobbles or broken tarmac or even like gravel in some cases. And that's even further compounded by the fact that on a TCR, you can run up to a 32 millimeter wide tire. I'm currently running 28 and at a low pressure, 65 PSI, you get a lot more smoothness than you do running narrow tires at high pressures, which was the order of the day when the Evo first came out all those years ago. In terms of handling, the Evo still handles extremely well. One of the best handling road race bikes of the last decade, and that's still true today. Uh, just fantastic steering, uh, nicely weighted, not too slow, not too fast. Nice short wheelbase, chain stays, it turns really sharply. Uh, really feels good out of the saddle as well and climbs extremely well due to that low weight on this bike just over six and a half kilos so very lightweight bike lighter than many most modern disc brake bikes unless you spend an extreme amount of money and riding the evo for the last couple of days i'll be reminded just how bad rim brakes are uh, sorry guys sorry uh, rim brake defenders out there on the internet rim brakes especially on carbon fiber rims are hopeless <laughs> They just don't work at all. Loads of noise, but no slowing down action at all. And that's an area where modern road bikes with the moves of disc brakes have greatly improved. Uh, the sense of control you have in all situations and just make a race bike a more approachable, a more accessible and a more enjoyable bike. In my experience, it's all my experience as well. You might disagree, that's fine, but let me know down in the comments section below where you sit on the whole disc brake versus rim brake debate. And I'm not trying to start an argument here. I'm just sharing my impressions of riding these two bikes back to back and where I feel the differences are in a 2011 bike versus a 2021 bike and where um, the improvements have come. And for me, disc brakes are an improvement. So yeah, the Evo, it's still a great bike. I love it. It's a classic bike. And I think that's why I've held onto it for so long and I haven't got rid of it. One thing I'm not so keen on with the Evo though, it's just, it's very shouty. Lots of logos all across the frame and fork. I think that's just, the trend back in 2011, lots of logos, make sure it stood out in the peloton or group ride. But thankfully, uh, modern road bikes are a lot more toned down and we've seen some much better, bolder paint jobs. Um, so yeah, plenty of choice out there if you don't want a shouty uh, sponsored sort of road bike. So that's Super 6 Evo. Let's switch bikes onto the TCR. Yes, I know loads of you will hate me for saying this, but rim brakes just aren't as good as hydraulic disc brakes, no matter the rim surface or braking material you are using. Those rim brakes on carbon fiber rims are just all noise and no action, whereas the hydraulic disc brakes are the complete opposite. No noise, no squeal, but loads of power. And it's easy to control that power as well with one finger braking in all circumstances, so much more uh, controllable. And that's what I like about hydraulic disc brakes, especially here in the Cotswolds where I have many very steep descents which terminate in a T-junction on a main road. So you go from 50, 60 k an hour to a dead stop in very short time. So you need hydraulic disc brakes to give you that ability to stop. And no, I'm not being paid by the bike industry to say that hydraulic disc brakes are better. It's purely based on over 10 years of testing road bikes and how they've changed in the last 10 years. And in my opinion, the move to disc brakes has been one of the best developments and as this bike shows very little weight penalty over what we had 10 years ago another key difference i've noticed by riding this new tcr back to back with my old super 6 evo is in the comfort now i always maintain that a super 6 evo was a really good smooth bike for a race bike now the tcr really moves the goalposts a long way forward in terms of how smooth this bike is Despite running the same 25mm wide tyres, this bike is clearly a smooth ride on very rough road surfaces. It just isolates you from the impacts and jarring vibrations much better. 
And another massive bonus on this TCR is the ability to go to a much wider tyre where Super 6 Evo won't take anything wider than a 25. This will go up to a 32 millimetre wide tyre so you could make it even smoother if you wanted. In terms of stiffness and handling, I don't think there's a huge amount between them. I think the stiffness on a Super 6 Evo still stands out well compared to this bike. The handling is also excellent across both bikes. The Super 6 Evo is always one of my fave bikes for handling, just really nice, um, predictable handling. And a TCR resembles that Super 6 Evo in terms of how it handles. So yeah, handling is very good across both bikes. So there we go then, two stunning road bikes separated by 10 years. But which would you choose? Well, let me know down in the comment section below. Which would I choose? Well, it has to be the TCR. The disc brakes, the bigger tyre clearance, the better comfort wins it for me. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again soon.